I've been getting this question a lot lately. Can we just skip this whole underbase thing? Let's say I get a client and they want a black t-shirt with two colors printed other than white. So I'm actually quoting them for three colors if I'm including this white underbase. Then they get all confused like, whoa, 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 you know, what's an underbase? And I have to explain it to them why they need it. You know, if you don't have your underbase, the colors won't pop, they won't be bright or opaque on the black t-shirt. And some clients are fine with that, you know, they understand. But then there's some that are trying to save a little bit of money and they would rather skip it and keep it to two colors. And look, I get it, I understand. I mean, I am one cheap son of a, but I also want the print to look good. And for that reason, I always recommend an underbase. And so I wanted to make something that shows them exactly what colors look like with and without an underbase. Just a handy little guide for them to look at that allows them to make a more informed decision. My first step was to go into Adobe Illustrator and create a graphic something that will show a variety of colors. I'm thinking I need two screens here, one for the underbase and one for the colors that get printed on top. The colors will be two inch rectangles printed on top of one inch squares for the underbase. So once aligned, half of the color will have an underbase and the other half doesn't. I also choke the underbase by half a point. I wanted to have a variety of colors to see how different they might look. Maybe some colors don't need an underbase, or maybe they all do, maybe none of them do. I don't know, man, we're just trying stuff here. Okay, so the next step would be to print those to film and expose the screens. I'm setting these both up on a 160 mesh. I find myself using 160 a lot lately. It's a good general all purpose screen mesh. I used to use 110 a lot for underbases, but I don't know, I feel like it's not really necessary. So I generally stick to 160 unless it's uh, a little bit more finer detail than I use like a 200 or 230. And so with the screens all set up, it's time to get down to business. For the underbase, I flooded once and hit it three times to clear the mesh. I followed that up with a flash for about 10 seconds, just long enough for that tacky feel, but not totally cured. Then I just made my way through the colors. I figured this might be a painstaking process, having to go through each color one at a time, possibly having to clean up each color before moving on to the next one. So I tried blocking off each color with some cut up cardboard and some tape. And while it does make things a little bit cleaner, still kind of a pain in the ass to do because I only have one six inch squeegee to work with, uh, the one that I 3D printed. So I have to clean that in between every color. After that, I just flash cured it real quick and that's it. And this is what it looks like. You can really see the difference here. Now, admittedly, I only hit each color once. You could just as easily hit those colors multiple times without an underbase, but it would probably take four or five times to get it to look right. I mean, I'm talking like print, flash, print, flash, print, flash, print, you know? And at that point, you're really just wasting ink. Printing an underbase, in my opinion, is a better way to get the right color without having to waste ink. So to answer the question, do you need an underbase? I say yes, but if you and your client are okay with the color not being super bright or opaque or popping off of that dark garment, then I guess, yeah, you, you could skip it if you really wanted to. But if I were you, I would make something just like this to show your client you know, exactly what it looks like with and without an underbase and allow them to make an informed decision. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you for watching, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all of that stuff, you know what to do. Uh, do you guys get clients like this that try to make the shirts a little bit cheaper in any way they can? You know, how do you deal with that? Let me know in the comments. Thank you again for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.